We are here on our boat in Dordive, which is on the Canal du Loin. And the River Loin is just the other side of this beautiful canal. And there's the boat with the smoke coming out of the chimney. Anyway, the reason I'm talking to you is that while we're here enjoying ourselves in this peaceful, calm and natural surroundings, with the birds singing, all around us, we get an email from Fukushima, from some terrified mothers of children who say that their children have swollen thyroids, swollen necks, and their noses are bleeding and they've got diarrhea because of the inhalation and ingestion of hot particles from the Fukushima disaster, which we have detected now, my colleague Marco Kaltofen has detected in filters as far away as Tokyo. So a, a filter in a car from Tokyo has been placed next to a piece of x-ray film and then the film has been developed and you can see the little splodges of light where the radioactive particles are emitting gamma radiation. And yet at the same time the mothers of these children are telling us that the Japanese government are saying everything is safe because the dose is low and it's less dose than you would get if you were living in an envir normal environment like this for a whole year. This is the stupidity that physicists have come to where children are dying and they're denying the evidence of their eyes on the basis of a mathematical model developed in 1952. It's horrifying, horrifying. The head of the International Atomic Watchdog is visiting Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant for the first time since March's devastating earthquake and tsunami. Yuki Amano has promised to help with the recovery effort and discussed what aid is needed at a meeting with the country's prime minister. As well as killing thousands, the natural disasters caused the plant's reactor cores to melt and leak dangerous amounts of radiation into the environment. But the IAEA chief says the workers at the plant are capable of bringing the leak under control by early next year as planned. Residents evacuated from a town close to the area held a belated memorial for the dead and missing on the irradiated no man's land. But even many of those who survived are struggling with their own nuclear nightmare. RT Sean Thomas explains. A triple disaster on a scale the world has never known, causing damage, destruction and uncertainty, forcing tens of thousands of Japanese refugees to leave their lives behind and seek shelter anywhere they can. Some people do uh, evacuate, but uh, the, the, the problem is they are minority and they, are being, they have been accused by their neighbors, by their classmates or, you know, the, of course, by official <laughs> uh, personnel that they are causing uh, unfounded uh, anxiety among people, which is not good. Though primarily a move towards self-preservation, this idea of desertion is defined by many as characteristically un-Japanese and has earned those who have evacuated the dishonorable title of traitor. Of course it's hard to hear that. We have family, neighbors, we think about our health, but in other words, we ran away. We escaped because we're scared of radiation, but there's no example in the world of something similar and the consequences are still ongoing. While well, those who have moved to shelters here in Tokyo are facing guilt and the pressure to move back home, there are others who have lost everything, cannot handle the overwhelming change, and they are facing even darker demons. Japan already has one of the highest suicide rates in the world, and following the disaster in March, the government has issued a warning about a possible nationwide epidemic of depression. Here, some uh, organic farmers uh, committed suicide because, you know, the... the for organic farmers, soil is everything. They nurture the good soil for after many years of uh, hard work, and it's just contaminated uh, in one night or two. You know, so so uh, some uh, farmers committed suicide, and I'm very sad to hear the news. And uh, many other farmers are also very much depressed. 
A recent national survey in Japan performed by Dr. Hiroshi and his team shows that suicide rates in Japan have in fact increased in the months since the disaster compared to the same time frame in the previous two years. But the demographics are not what you might expect. The, the suicide rate increased uh, uh, not in the uh, epicenters, you know, uh, disaster epicenters, but the peripheral areas because survivors struggling to the reconstruct their life. They have no time to, su to, to make suicide. This disaster has certainly taken its toll on Japan's economy and such constant reminders of an intense topic can harm the collective psyche of the people who live here as well. Because of the tsunami disaster and plus nuclear disaster, many people ac actually lost their jobs or, or their working uh, conditions has crashed. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, so they, they have uh, so many good reasons to commit suicide. Causing Japan's death toll to keep rising even though the initial disaster subsided months before. In Japan, Sean Thomas, RT. Well, a, a lot of these nuclear scientists uh, not only uh, are into denying that radi radiation is a problem or trying to minimize the consequences of radioactivity, they actually have the nerve to claim that radiation is good for you. And they have this theory, it's called radiation hormesis, and they claim that, uh, that radioactivity exercises the immune system and it's a healthy thing for people. Uh, essentially what they're doing is promoting, pushing their technology uh, with this incredible, this incredible lie. I think what is happening in terms of, well, the Fukushima Daiichi disaster and the minimization and the denial by Japanese authorities and the International Atomic Energy Agency about the consequences of the radioactivity from Fukushima impacting on Japan. In fact, it's impacting all over the world. And, and now these characters, the, the Hormesis gang, in fact, this week there was supposed to be a presentation to the, uh, it, 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 it's down in South Carolina, it's called the Savannah River site, where the United States built a bunch of nuclear reactors and uh, has developed uh, the plutonium for nuclear weapons and so forth. Well, the folks down there, because it's a high-pollution area, it's just what they call the Superfund site in the United States because of all the, all the radioactivity, all, all of the, the pollution from radiation. Well, this week there was supposed to be a speaker before uh, it's a citizen's advisory board at the Savannah Rivers, and he planned to, uh, uh, to tell this, this, this advisory board that don't worry about the radiation from Fukushima. The Japanese shouldn't worry about the radiation from Fukushima. In fact, he, he wrote a little newspaper article saying even the workers who have been exposed to these enormous amounts of radioactivity there, they'll mean no health consequences. Why? Because of radiation or mesis. Many parents in Fukushima Prefecture no longer allow their children to play outside. With high levels of radiation being detected in areas far from the stricken nuclear plant, some parents are extremely worried about their children's health. I'm sure my children have been exposed, but I don't know what the effects of this may be. My younger baby has suffered from diarrhea for some time, and I wonder if it's caused by radiation. So I came here to consult a doctor. In an attempt to clear any doubts, concerned families are visiting volunteer doctors at open clinics who have begun keeping records of symptoms for future studies. If we conduct thorough research, a few years from now we will be able to assess the effects of radiation on Fukushima Prefecture. And if it turns out there has been an impact, we can't just simply say, I'm sorry. As uncertainty about the effects of radiation grows, some families are caught in the dilemma of whether to stay at home or to pack their bags and leave the prefecture. Unpredictable radiation readings by volunteer monitors are stoking people's fear. According to the government, radiation levels here are just one-tenth of the annual exposure limit that carries a very small risk of cancer. And some experts insist that, at present, the levels are too low to pose an immediate risk to adults or children's health. 
Everywhere in the world there are children who catch colds, have fever, vomit or have diarrhea. These, in Fukushima Prefecture, are not caused by radiation. There is no doubt about it. Stress and anxiety, on the other hand, are considered risk factors for the general well-being of both children and their parents. Obviously, we have to do the best we can to reduce the risk of exposure, but Japanese people also have to carry on following their regular lifestyle. While there is still no scientific consensus on the consequences of low radiation exposure, for now soil decontamination and accurate information are likely the best remedy for worried parents and their children.